It'll change your life. When you see a 10 year old being sold, you're like, oh, shit, this is really happening. Welcome to my hand, man. Whatever comes to my mind at that moment. Guys, today we're at the City Summit. It's the first day and we have some amazing uh, speakers, transformational CEOs, executives, entrepreneurs that are changing lives and it's more about how they can make impact than just how they can become successful and make money. All right. And so as you can see like up front of the board, that's Ty Lopez, he's one of the speakers up here, we're going to catch him after, we also have Tom, the, the, one of the founders of, uh, of Quest Nutrition, uh, we're going to get him right after, right now, we're just waiting for him to get done, but it's amazing to be able to see how so many um, men and women impact lives every single day, so check this out. So what's one thing that you don't have that if you had, you can make more impact and more lives. Well, to connect with other people and make a bigger impact. Because I believe we're all stronger together. I mean, we all bring ideas to the table, we all bring a network together. And there's so much work to do because I put it like this, Daniel. You know, right now, if you look at what's happening in our country and society with our children, our veterans, our seniors, and the health crisis that we face today, if you look at everything that's happening, it's almost like somebody's it's got shot and they got stabbed and they got cut and they fell and broke their ankle. And you can't fix one part because the other parts come to bleed out. There's so many things going on. So it's a collaborative effort. We can come together and we can get them on the table with the best of the best surgeons, the best minds. And that comes from the experience of having a school of big hearts. Mm -hmm. Big hearts and people with clarity of what they want to do with intention. They hold each other accountable, that, that we dream big, where there's no limits in our living, there's no limits in our thoughts, there's no limit when, in a realm of possibility. All things are possible. Can, can you talk about two things, three things you said? Intention, mm -hmm. dreams, and accountability. Yeah. Because what I see is people have these dreams. Mm -hmm and their intention is to get to that dream. Yeah. But they, I believe that you need that commitment, but I believe before commitment, you need accountability to yourself mm -hmm. so that you know when you're going, like for instance, emotion, we teach emotional intelligence. We don't teach it, yeah. we help people understand it. Yeah. But what is that, I, th I would say, that accountability is like one of the biggest challenges out of mm -hmm. anybody all day. Yeah. Well, everyone wants to get successful, but everybody wants to be successful in their own terms. Mm -hmm. They want to live life on their own mm -hmm. terms. And, you know, we live life, the older you get, you know, you something put it like this. We live our life forward, but we understand our life backwards. And we understand yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Love it. Yeah, so the first thing... But you, can you repeat that real quick? We Just live life forward. We understand life backwards. Okay? Now, what comes first? The thought, then the thing, the mental, the physical, the inner, and the outer. So it begins to have the big vision. In the world today, right now, Daniel, where uh, technology is really just, just shifting the way we live and think. Right now, in the next 20 years, is going to be absolutely incredible. But if you think about it, with that cell phone in our hands today, we don't have to need to remember addresses. We don't have to remember phone numbers. You know, it seems like some people would say that we're even less intelligent. But what happens is when you when you build that down, something else heightens. Mm. That's the creative mind. The thing yeah. that made everything possible. Everything mm. that we see, it came first of all from a thought, from a vision. And by solving a problem, from a, a person sitting on a chair, before the chairs we had a rock. The rocks were too hard. They made a chair, they put it back on it. She was directly back and they put a cushion on it. And they made colors and fabric. So you blend in. So all these things around. So you always have to look at the what's next. So it begins with that. Awesome you guys. So tell me both of our nonprofits are part of the City Gala. Tell me about your nonprofit and what'd you just offer me? Like, what'd you want me to go on? You should go undercover with us. So tell them what you do. Tell so, everybody what you do. So, so we have we have a group of ex Navy SEALs, ex CAA guys, ex Green Berets that that physically go in and find abducted, trafficked, sold children in third world countries. We work with the governments in those countries. Now we get arrested. I've been I've been on 21 missions. I've been arrested in nine different countries. How'd that go? But but the guys that arrested me are the federal agents whose office we were in the day before. 
planning at all because the bad guys think that we got extradited to the U.S. to stand trial. So, so, so we're down there. See, the problem is if, if a 12-year-old gets kidnapped here in California and taken across the border, there's a 90 plus percent chance that she's in a child sex ring organization because they make a quarter million dollars. Well, not just she too, right? Yeah, it's absolutely. Also, absolutely. So people following, don't understand. That. You follow fingerprints and leads, you never find them. They're gone. But people really don't understand that it's boys and girls. Absolutely. It's not yeah. just yeah. girls yeah. being trafficked. Yeah. Is it more girls than guys? There's more girls than guys. Okay. In, in, in the sex trafficking world, that the boys are being being sold into into labor camps and stuff. Mm -hmm. But realize this: there are more today. I mean, we're, we're, I'm not talking about children that are just being abused at home. I'm talking about sold human beings. There's more today than all 300 years of the transatlantic slave trade put together. And good people don't even know that's going on. So, so I, I take badass guys who know how to fight, that know how to handle themselves, that want to actually go and physically find those children. We work directly with the U.S. Embassy, the the, the, the federal agents in that country, and go in and identify those kids. It, it'll change your life when you see a ten-year-old being sold. You're like, oh, shit, this is really happening. I know it is because I was in, this, I, you know, I'm working in schools right around the country, mm -hmm. and these kids tell me everything. I just felt that. That's some crazy stuff. So, one thing I saw, FBI stats, I think it was in 2016 or 17, that I think it's about 850,000 kids go uh, missing. Yeah. So 800,000 plus kids go missing. They don't know how many kids get returned or go back. But I've heard the number is about 100,000 kids in sex slavery in America and about the average age is 12 years old. Yep. People don't understand this. So you're from Northern California. Yeah. You're smart. Yes. You're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. You live in Southern California now? I do. What's your purpose in life? Oh, my purpose in life is to bring inspiration to mainstream media. Bring back to the stage. Talk about Across the nation. <laughs> I know that answer. I have it very, okay. I have it very down. Yeah. What's your biggest challenge? Um, my biggest challenge is getting media, Hollywood, uh, a lot of the people I speak to to be vulnerable we're here in their conversations. So much What's the last time you've been vulnerable and open to somebody? At breakfast. <laughs> at breakfast? Yeah, at breakfast. I told them I didn't sleep for like six days straight last month and it yeah. sent me to the hospital. <laughs> really? Yeah, because I said yes to way too many things. I was a yes machine. So why do you, oh, so this is interesting. Why do you say yes? Uh, well, I used to have it that it felt really good to show up for people. And then now I'm getting people pleasing. It's just second to really standing for yourself and being able to say no and So you like, so you get fulfillment out of making people happy. Yeah, and now I need to do it. You one, just said yes again. I well, love it. Yeah, but now I need to do it one to many instead of one to one. So I can't have lots of interviews and lots. Of, I can't have any more coffee dates. I think it's just pretty much done. So. Can you give them advice with like shifting that? Because I see that so many people are people pleasing, but they wear themselves down. And they don't. They're not whole themselves. Yeah. How can you be whole and at the same time love, connect, communicate, and be vulnerable so you can make more impact? Yeah, I love that. So basically. You can never ever help anyone without putting your air mask on first. So, so, so sometimes people are trying to people are trying to be a source without fueling their source. So I was trying to be a source of light for everyone. All the while, I thought that that meant saying yes. And in reality, I really interrupted. There we go. I love you. Say no. Have to be able to make a bigger impact. What would it be? Um, I mean, right now I'm trying to build that platform. So it's it's having a self-sustaining economic engine behind it, where the very things that you pay for are things that empower you in your life. So it's what I call self-signaling, uh, which is a psychological principle about you try to tell other people about yourself, but you end up telling yourself more than anybody else. So that's I mean that's what Disney does. So the real money in the industry that I'm in is all about merchandise, but if you can make that merchandise intrinsically self-empowering, then you've got something. Where can I buy one of your shirts? Um, impacttheory.com. <laughs>